Um, well, if you, you can't, first of all, you can't get it out. That's the first thing. That's not a, that was not a smutty joke because they've grown up now. It's not like it was in the nineties. This this is awesome. Look at this. Look 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 look. look. Right. And you've got these transparencies, and you can uh, put them in your window. <laughs> yes, stick in your window. No, I think they go on the disc, or that you. Uh, I can't remember what you do with them. They, they, so they, uh, or they go through here, maybe. No, no, no. You put them, put the disc on them or something. I can't remember now. I don't remember what you're supposed to do. You meant to do something with something happens. Something happens. Something something or that pattern there with that or I don't know different ones. But still, that, that's that's fantastic. I like. This um, exemplifies the the. Is it the black album? The black album. This is what we do. We're this. They like the multimedia ex- expression of um, progginess um, of um, event album, etc. Uh, Lateralis, kind of rubbish sixth form rename, really, isn't it? I, I can see that's that was the name of my play in the lower sixth. It was it was about life and all its you know something something. I don't think it means anything. It almost had a different title, kind of. But I'll talk about that later. Is a song by me? Uh, the song yeah. is about something. I can't remember now what it's about. Yeah, no, it's it, it has no meaning. It's the name of their album. Yeah, it's a pretentious word. Uh, yeah, we were really harsh last week, and we need to get past the Nickelback thing. It's not their fault. Uh, it's Nickelback's fault, but you know my my knowledge of the band now encompasses Wikipedia. Uh, so if any of the '90s people who are angry, well, we haven't released the previous week's video by the way, so we don't know what the response is yet. Uh, if you need an angle, that would make it easier. Yeah, Wikipedia. You got everything from Wikipedia. Normally they say that when I haven't. <laughs> what? But one of the things they did between these two albums is they did a cover of No Quarter, um, which is great, and. Again, emphasises something about what who they are. This is what we are. We're not that crap. We're doing this, but it's all. You also get the, the whole sound of it as well. It's it's really overproduced, and the the vocals are like really processed. You know, which they are no quarter actually, obviously, but much more obviously seventies, isn't it? You know, there is no band. In one sense, and yet in another sense, they're a jam band, but it's atmosphere music. You know. It's very riffy, but it is atmosphere music. That you know, um, can are the perfect uh, comparison, and I, I think uh, post OK Computer uh, Radiohead, but like an American version. That's what they are, you know. And this is a huge leap from the last album. They've grown up. It's very rhythmic, and it's lots of awkward bits, um, nasty, dirty riffing in interesting time signatures, and there's polyrhythms and stuff, and. and you know, and, and it's too long. <laughs> it's a double album. It's 79 minutes and however many seconds, and, you know, they allowed 20 seconds space <laughs> on the disc. Um, but that's the nature of the jamming atmosphere music. It's going to be long, isn't it? It's very difficult to do that. And if you if you, if you bridge it, it's boring. You need, you need the whole journey of the jam. So that's not that it's because it's from the 90s, it's too long. That's just the nature of that kind of music, I think. But echoes of... Uh, and Justice for All, oh, we're going to make the songs longer. Add another bit. <laughs> Add another riff. Uh, but this is, this is not part of the same genre as Limp Bizkit. Not anymore. The, that previous album kind of was, you know. The title track uses Fib- Fibonacci numbers. I mean, how that's, you know, you don't get any more proggy and not very 90s than that. So, yeah, like I said, Can, Radiohead, that 90s thing is still there, which is really the vocals. And it's got to get past it. You got to get past it. I think I quite like Tall, but I don't really. Un- I don't know whether it's justified or not. Mm-hmm. It could be the sort of. I can see they are a good bridging band between sort of like that Nickelback slash new metal to something <laughs> better, <laughs> or Pearl Jam or whatever. Yeah. Like that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you grew up in the nineties and you love the cool music. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, is, this is better than that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, having said that, yeah, you say the sort of like they put in a lot of effort with the covers and the transfers and the impossible to get out CD 
um, yeah, a lot of effort has gone into that to say this is who we are. And but yeah, I find myself listening to it, not really knowing who I'm supposed to be to actually enjoy this. Uh, am I supposed to be a prog head? Um, if you are a, a prog head. Well, they call it you, prog metal, actually. Yeah, I, well, I was going to say. I, mean, I think Dream Theater when people say that, but well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Well, prog I, I was actually thinking Harkin more than mm. uh, Dream Theater. Probably because, actually, so Octavarium, obviously great. Um, but I would rather listen to Harkin than this. Oh, yeah. Because you've got. Let's say, the thing about prog metal is, and metal in general, is if you're playing prog metal. I find invariably I play it when I'm on my own because I don't want to have to explain to someone why I'm listening to <laughs> why it. Why are you listening to this? <laughs> I'm an angry man. Um, and <laughs> if I do get caught out, I like having to say, really, so like with Harkin, uh, you've got a uh, Cockroach King. Yeah, say, well, listen good. to this. This yeah. is why I listen to this. Or, you know, there's something interesting that you can actually say about this. Whereas with this, I've just got to say, well, I kind of like it. And I don't think that reflects very well <laughs> on me <laughs> uh, for someone who's not into prog metal. Actually, it's not that metally because not really it's, not not from our point of view. No, yeah, it's quite quite soft, really. Yeah. Uh, every time I think it's it's getting there, they actually take a step back, and I think that's where I find it a, a little bit disappointing. Is that they win me over? I'm thinking, oh, I'm enjoying this, and then they step back. Rather than stepping on, yes, yes, because they want to keep the the sort of it's like drone music. It's like yeah. they keep the groove going. Yeah, not the next bit of the now the epic section. They can't do that because so it's, it's, it's not, yeah, yeah, it's like parable. Yeah, so parable is this really cool sort of mellow atmospheric thing, which goes into para, parabola, which starts yeah. off quite heavy and fast. And you think, okay, they're stepping up now. This is getting epic, mm -hmm. and then you get into about a minute into parabola, and you're like. Mm. <laughs> is that it? Okay, so is, well, they, 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 is, yeah. they step back, but they do go forward again, and things get interesting. Like, but I mean, you kind of left with that. Well, they could have, they could have pushed it that little bit more, and it would have been flipping awesome, you know. Um, so you never get like the Octavarium epicness. Oh no, yeah. Um, but they, they, that's not what they can't. You know, that's not <laughs> that's not what the, who they are. You know, this this was controversial. You know, this this was. Some people loved it. Some people were deeply offended at this uncool nerdy nerdy music when they're supposed to be the cool kids with the with um, wearing their tank top, not tank tops, um, lumberjack shirts. You know, yeah. Dollapalooza. It's weird that because I've actually written here for some reason I find the lack of controversy very disappointing. Um, so I think what I'm, I'm talking about there is. Oh, on the first album, they had very strange track titles that sort of sometimes yes. made me think Frank Zappia. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this needs that, con you know, it needs a little bit of controversy there. There's nothing, you know, if someone walked in halfway through the album, number one, you can't hear the vocals, so you don't know what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. And I'm guessing if you could work out what the vocals are saying, there's nothing, you know... Um, controversial about it you know not, not that we would consider controversial no, no. Uh, whereas what you want from a heavy prog metal is is that kind of that element of danger if someone walks in halfway and they catch the wrong track mm -hmm. they'll be like what the hell are you listening to um well you wouldn't get that with this you would get oh you like you like alternative rock do you yeah you heard a tiny snippet of it which would be un unrepresentative yeah Whereas Dream Theater is the opposite of that. You get a snippet of it, and it's... And that, that snippet might actually be much more proggy than what Dream Theater actually are. Yeah. quite traditional songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously too long. It goes without saying. Yeah. It's, you know, Lateralus is actually track nine. Which yeah. Is sort of like... You're a long way through the album by then. It. Are you actually going to get there? Yeah. But you're right. It's atmospheric enough for it to be sort of backgroundy. Although I did sort of actually listen to it as a as an entity on its own uh, and it was okay <laughs> it's okay yeah, okay it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah and you you can't easily split the album in two I think well maybe you could stop at track seven 
I think Schism, Parable, and Parabola are actually a little little trilogy thing. Mm-hmm. It's not like two halves or anything like that. It's just long, and that really does feel like Injustice for All. I only just thought of that, but yeah, it, it, you know how it's just too long. The songs are really long, but it's they're not long because they've structured something that's really long. They just the songs just carry on, mm. <laughs> which they need to by the nature of the music. Unlike Injustice for All, which should have been trimmed into songs. Because it's it's grooving, it's jamming, and if they've got a, a funky polyrhythm or something going on, then they, they've got to see it to the end, you know. But it does mean to listen to takes up time. Is that is that a proggy thing? It's the same length as Topographic Oceans. There is nowhere near the amount of music on here as there is on Topographic Oceans. But I mean, that's another example of a, a boring album. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's really good, you know. But that's got John Anderson m- melodies on it. You know, they, they can't really have melodies like. The melody, to a certain extent, has to be taken out to make it harsh and angry, angry man. I mean, who are they pitching this at? Are they pitching it at angry teenagers? No, but well, well, the argument is they're not pitching it at anyone anymore. And the, the, they must have been aware that their music was pitched at angry teenagers who were slightly more sophisticated than, the, you know. Uh, and now this is them doing their thing, and it's like, well, we don't care about that. We're doing what we do. This is what we do, you know. Um they had seags between the songs which they had to cut out and you think bloody hell how long would it going to be but actually I mean mantra's like a seag isn't it yes and, and that's pretty cool actually yeah, yeah. Um, maybe they should have sacrificed a few songs and kept the seags on there yes actually yeah and I thought that's probably disgusting you should have more <laughs> songs but yeah uh, even with the seags maybe it would have helped it it would have made it go along rather than just more of this it's another song now. Of, of <laughs> um, it's a, it's an album I would listen to one song and really enjoy it, and then put something else on, which is a controversial thing to say, obviously, for a prog progger. Um, the producer is David Bottrell from uh, well, Sylvian Fripp, really, and Thrack. He's the Thrack man. So that the '90s sound of King Crimson, that's Thrack man. Interestingly, not Construction of Light. Um, and of course, this tour, not their whole tour, because they had a massive tour, obviously, and King Crimson aren't, aren't massive. Um, the, the, the US part of the Constructive Light tour, everyone talks about the European tour because that was recorded, but the, I think it's 2001, they're supporting tour. And, there was the, and that, that was a really interesting um, marriage of, 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 of styles. And the, the, the interesting that, uh, oh, well, I've got the quote here. Um, this is someone in the band saying, for me, being on stage with King Crimson is like Lenny Kravitz playing with Led Zeppelin <laughs> or Britney Spears on stage with Dave Houston. I mean, it's obviously tongue-in-cheek, and it's, you know, that's cool. Because these are, they're, they're a great band in their own right. They don't need to be uh, worshipping at the feet of the Crimson, um, even though it's always what we're going to like, isn't it? But I do remember at the time reading comments by the tour fans because that was really interesting to me. And they didn't really understand King Crimson. They didn't get They were like, what is, what is, what's this? What are you doing? You know, so the, it's there's still a a chasm, there's still a gap, um, and yet it really did occur to me that musically the difference between this and Dream Theater. We keep saying Dream Theater because they're the nerdy proggy end who are uncool, and yet musically there's not that much difference really. There isn't really that much. It's still, <laughs> it's still that, isn't it? You know, it's not that different. And again, there will be some Tool fans who will be offended. Awful Dream Theater. They're so uncool. Um, and some people which would which would see that I, th- I remember a, a reviewer maybe, maybe it was just a kid in the audience who commented online because I just can't remember and he made this weird comment about Fripp he's trying to do the 70s guitar odyssey thing or something what is he talking about and it's like they've, they've just never heard lead guitar <laughs> never, it's, and it, unless it's like riff solo riffs and that's it you know, but this big structured thing of all melody, guitar melodies and stuff would be so alien to them. Because um, this doesn't have that. But rhythmically, this has got a ton of stuff. You know, I'm sure Pat Masalotto was in heaven. There was a track where they all jammed together. I don't know where they jammed together. I don't remember someone can go into more detail about that. You know, 2001, MTV still reported on them. You know, there were still big news about. All the albums coming out. Is the album coming out? When is Tool going to release an album? MTV. That's the world that this is from. So this is, this is fantastic in that sense, you know. 
I mean, I think more Opeth than Dream Theater. There's more of a thing there because it's, it's much more contemporary, I suppose. Yeah. Um, the original bassist who left, actually, not on this, uh, had a Chris Squire signature Rickenbacker. You know, so that heavy twanging bass, obviously that's, that's where the similarity ends. It's nothing like Yes. You're not going to get that attack of Chris Squire because you've got to have the big guitars over the top of it, drowning everything out. The whole point of Yes is, and the reason uh, Peter Banks had to leave was because Peter Banks wanted to do Pete Townsend and, you know, and no, 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 the bass is going to do the loud guitar stuff. The lead guitar needs to be lead guitar and turn, turn down your, your distortion. It's got to be really plinky, you know, and you would never have Steve Howe on the Tool album. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, is it? Um, yeah, and apparently that, that bass player, Chris Squire, signature bass player, one of the reasons he left, apparently he wanted to play guitar. So that was the thing. Um, but his, his new band is called Fearsome Engine, as in Fearsome Engine from Ian mm-hmm. M. Banks. Isn't that, isn't that cool? I mean, that that's a really cool reference to make. I can't remember. Is it Ian M. Banks or Ian Banks? Ian M. Banks. M. Banks is the, oh, when he does his sci-fi books. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he does Ian Banks. He doesn't want to do sci-fi. He doesn't, I think that's the thing, isn't it? The Wasp Factory. Um, I mean, they're... Um, I turned, I mean, the, the, the band title can be misinterpreted. And, and, and that comparison with Can, it's not like a band title like Can. They can do it or whatever. It's just... Not tool because it's a tool to society. No, it is. It is just smutty. <laughs> it's Don and Mohom. You know that's what it is. And their early stuff was to them. They were being really heavy. That was what they were trying to be. More of that. More guitar. Just wall of guitar. That's heavy, isn't it? You know. And they had a song against the PMRC and all that. And so they like the parental advisory explicit lyrics signs. And they were, they were really anti censorship and all that. You know. But the problem is because it's not what we would call heavy. It is harsh and extreme, but not to us because we like guitar music. Um, and you go in that direction, you 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 take out stuff. You have to take out melody. You you have to take out the yesness. You can't have new song du soleil in the middle of this, you know. So unless you're not used to heavy music, then it sounds really. That can be boring. And that's not really a criticism of that music. That's a criticism of our where what we're used to and what, where we're coming from, you know. And that anti anti industry thing that their stance on that very Radiohead, I thought, in that they seem to be doing their own thing over there, and the industry's over there, and yet it's very hypocritical. They're on MTV, and you know, but they did release a fake version of their album before this one came out. Um, let's look what it, what it was called. That's some silly name. Oh, Systema Encephale. Or oh, Enzo Fall. Um, 12, strong, 12 song track list. And the songs were uh, River, River Christ, <laughs> Number Reft, and Silly Forest. Music with a K. Yeah, City, city Song Titles. And uh, what it was, that was to beat Napster. They didn't like Napster. Because it, it was they had these fake files put out there of, of basically Rickrolled, I imagine, <laughs> kind of stuff. Uh, which flooded Napster and made it very hard to find the new album on Napster because they got the fake one out there. I thought that was very good. So I like that. That's you know they they they're in certainly ideologically that I agree with them in that you know I, I'm anti-industry and I don't like Napster. You don't, I don't I don't do the free music thing. Musicians should work for free thing. I don't believe in that. But also I don't obviously the industry is terrible and all that stuff. It's weird. That seems to be a subject that's come up quite a lot these days. I wonder if the music industry is due a change. What, again? Yeah, because uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if you know the Black Keys. They, I know the name, yeah. Yeah, they did a interview with Joe Rogan. And going into the interview, actually, really, you should watch it, Kevin. It's actually a really interesting interview. Music's not bad, but, I mean, they are people that have been involved in the music industry, and they sort of built it themselves. Mm. Uh, so and they he's, he seems to think quite deeply about it and it is really interesting and it's not the first time I've heard some of the things about how the music you industry like, is completely you mean it's like Spotify yeah so Spotify and the way the money goes is, I, th- yeah. I think he actually had a, a meeting with Spotify uh, and 
the guy, you know, the the guy said, "Look, it's not our fault. We gave the we basically gave the music industry or the labels stock in Spotify mm-hmm. for the rights to your music, right? And they've just not give you the, any of the money, right? They just yeah, they won't. They'll they, do they that. Just bypass them. So yeah. yeah, the artists are getting like point zero 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 one yeah. pence per play sort of thing. Yeah, they only give you the money if you've got the money to take yeah. them to court. That's the only way you get money out of them. That's, yeah. 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 So that's the thing. Those companies are still there. They're just not as big as they were. And Spotify is a way of not bypassing them, unfortunately. <laughs> it's ruining it. Well, yeah, Spotify is actually bypassing them. It's, it's become a vehicle for the labels to bypass the musicians. Yes. Yeah. Which we're on a shitty deal anyway. Yes. I, th- I think the answer is is to use that as, an, as advertising. It's like YouTube. And, you know, sell the CDs on your on your uh, site. Do, do the lovely deluxe niceness and all that. You've got to have some... You've got to have a fan base before you can do that, though, haven't you? I mean, how are you going to do it? We still have live music. You know, live music is now a thing. So, you know, you can tour. And they can't take that away from you. We can never take it away. We need to write a song. Uh, okay, right, reviews. Uh, so, predictably, many liked it. Many were upset by the... Because uh, they're Lollapalooza trendies. Obviously, they're not going to like that. They're, they're oh, hang on a minute, they're a prog band. That's not cool. Meaning mongering for the fantasy fiction set. That just says it everything, you know. Ha ha ha! Yeah, they're nerds. Fuck you. Uh, Black Sabbath jamming with Genesis at the bottom of a coal shaft. That's not, I can go with that. That sounds great. Uh, that does sound great. I'm it's not meant to be complimentary. <laughs> and actually, yeah, yeah, it's probably not quite as good as that. <laughs> that sounds brilliant. Um, and here we go. Okay, uh, drums, bass, and guitars move in jarring cycles of hyper howl and near silent death march. The prolonged running times of most of Lateralis, 13 tracks, are misleading. The entire album rolls and stomps with sweet-like purpose. They have no idea how to review them. They have no clue what to do with this. It's, it's baffled them completely. Isn't it interesting? Rolling Stone. Tool uses taboo-breaking imagery for hellfire moralising... In- oh, I'll start again. Tool uses taboo-breaking imagery for hellfire moralising in songs that swerve from bitter reproach to nihilistic condemnation. Its music has refined all the troubled majesty of grunge. So what's a taboo breaking in that? Where's the taboo breaking on that? That's what I want. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not there. That's not there for. Don't do the music. That's just crap. They're just <laughs> writing crap. It put you off the music. You read that crap. It's horrible. Tossers. <laughs> I mean, music journalists. You know, people who review music. What a what idiots they are. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do that. We're just having a casual chat about albums. I didn't mention the live shows, you know. That, that, that it's, it is a multimedia event, like the, like the way they've done the CD and light shows and all that stuff. They are, you know, they like Pink Floyd. They like all that stuff. You know, that's what they are. Um, and they have a very specific style, which to us seems like they're trapped in it, but I'm sure they don't see it like that. That's their style. That's what they do, you know. I think the singer went was joined, uh, I can't remember the name of the band. He was in some other band, which is much more melodic. It's like he came back to this. It wasn't like he came back with loads of melody. He went back to doing tooling, tooling, you know. So that's cool. It has to be four eggs again, I think, unfortunately. But this, if you like that kind of thing, if you like the sound of what we've described as best we can, you really, really like this, I think. But you've got to be in the mood for it, and it's got to be exactly what you want. It's a very specific thing, you know. Uh, just because you like uh, the lamb doesn't mean you like this. Um, and just because you like... Smells like teen spirit. <laughs> Doesn't mean you like this either. I don't know. If you like Opeth, I think you might find this a bit tame. Yes, but you will really, really like it. Yeah. I know um, Jack Osborne discovered proper prog because King Crimson was supporting Tool. And he discovered King Crimson. Ozzy was like, yeah, look, King Crimson. I'll, I'll listen to this, Gentle Giant. So Ozzy was introducing to all these classic fans. <laughs> So for Jack Osborne, it was it was like a, an amazing moment. Oh my god, all this music! It's not all boring. <laughs> yeah, four eggs for me. Yeah, I agree. Four eggs. Cool. There we go. So we've got another one to do. It's going to be the same. <laughs> so if you just watch this again, we'll do it. We'll do it. But we'll. Um, I've got a funny idea for next week, which we may or may not do. So more silly stuff next week. I think it's a good thing we had like. Few weeks break. <laughs> oh, no. Otherwise, it really would have been. This one's a bit better than the last one, <laughs> but but still sounds like that. 
I could. I think. Oh, maybe it should be instrumental. I don't care about the vocals at all. Yeah, I, I, they just I agree. annoy me. I'm like, please I, stop. I agree. Yeah, exactly. please stop sounding like Nickelback. <laughs> Or just sing into a microphone and turn off all the stupid effects. <laughs> uh, mm. So, yeah, cheers.